So we have a new mission to do. Uh, <laughs> past that really massive fail we just had. So I just realized that a couple of my mod buttons are totally broken. And that is because my power went out uh, when I was playing the game. And it broke a ton of stuff. And uh, it'll fix itself when I get to update 1.0, I'm sure. But in the meantime, I'm not even going to worry about it. Because we have so many freaking mods installed. I don't want to try breaking anything else. So we picked up a few new stuff, right? So we have, uh, we have Plant Flag on the Moon. We've had that one for a while. We have Take a Picture of Duna. Well, we plan on doing that. And then we have Position syn Satellite and Synchronous Orbit of Duna. <gasps> So look how much money that gives, 429,000. So we're gonna kill multiple birds with one stone here. We're gonna bounce it around. It's gonna be like a ricochet shot. It's gonna be awesome. But first we need to take a picture of Duna. Cause this is our, oh, and by the way, if you ever see these, these are missions that I have available to me that I haven't picked up. So, you know, for example, that is the, uh, the what you might call it, the mission for setting up a synchronous or orbit uh, around the, and it's actually a, circularized orbit circularized orbit around uh, Kerbin but we don't need to do that I'm going to show you a couple other things that I've done so that's the orbit that we need to set up around Duna which believe it or not is pretty easy when you're coming into Duna right so when you're making your maneuver in you can actually set up a pretty easy orbit there I wonder how affected that would be oh it totally would be affected by Ike wouldn't it if Ike got ever close enough to that we'll, we'll set that up right so we have that going on uh, let's go, jeez, which one was it? I don't remember what I named it. Is the, no, Atlas is the one that doesn't work anymore, right? Oh, that's right, this probe. Okay, so let's go back over to Kerbin. So I did set up a, uh, a, a satellite here. It's another, ooh, I got some weird, like, debris there, too. Let's destroy that before I run into it. So... I sent up a new telescope, and this was for one of the missions. And you'll see when I go back out, I have a lot more money. In fact, I'll just show you it uh, when we go to this spacecraft. I guess I should actually name this one. But this is also a space telescope that I set up. So I got like, I got like a good like six or seven missions done in the meantime, which is really really good because it made us a lot of money. We're up to. 565,000 at the moment, which as you could imagine is quite a bit. So let's use this because we actually haven't used this telescope and this is kind of more of a deep space telescope. It's way further away from Kerbin than it is, you know, the, the other ones that we've sent up. It's uh, almost four and a half million meters, which is pretty good. All right, let's target Duna. Uh, set its target. There we go. Now we can make this large. Uh, where is Duna in relation to where we're at currently? Duna's over there, so we need to... Okay. Uh, let's... Whoa! This up. Do I have lights on this thing? I don't think I ever put lights on it. That's fine. Can't see what the heck I'm doing. I need to show target. There it is. I like how it's like super low res. But we do... Whoa. Oh, no, that's the wrong way. This thing is very, very quick. Uh, I'm going to turn on my more, uh, well, I don't know why that's so low res, like that little icon, uh, but I turned on my control so it's a bit better than it was. We're getting close, oh, that's the wrong way, we're getting closer to Duna, whoop, whoop, down, down again, down again, okay, zoom in, um, Oop, it went flying across my screen. Well, uh, 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 we'll get there eventually. All right. Oh, that is so close. Will it work? Take picture? Nothing to see here. Dang it, we're so close. Arr. Will that work? Take picture. Aha! Ooh, we got both Duna and Ike in one. Nailed it. So why why take a picture? Well, I mean we've taken a picture before, sure, but we you know we need to send this back, get this mission done real quick, because we're gonna be taking this sucker, uh, this this picture, and basically be, wow I ran out of power, does not have a lot of uh, power on this thing, but it can generate it. It's got a lot of these little doohickeys on it, but I I want to take this picture, and use it as a point of reference right so our our scientists are looking at this and they're going okay 
we could potentially send something to Duna, but we got to figure out what the heck Duna looks like, right? It's like the same time that uh, NASA took pictures of Mars, like really good pictures of Mars, and they were like, okay, we could kind of see how this thing looks. We could probably send a rover there, right? Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to send a rover. It's a rover that I've named the Rumbler. Its whole purpose is not to flip over, which is, I mean, that's, and if it does, it doesn't break, and I'll show you what I mean by it. But it's got a roll cage, and this is almost done. Wow, this is really taking a while. Well, I'll just remove that. Okay, let's go straight to the rumbler. So this is the rumbler. It's uh, like I said, it's got it's got a roll cage, and the whole idea is that it's gonna be super stable, so it's not gonna blow up if I have to brake suddenly. Because the the thing we learned about the Magnus is when I use the brakes it would just flip forward real quick right so like for this for instance it's got these front and back like guards on it so basically what i could do is i can i can hit the brakes and if it you know goes a little too forward it just bounces off the the thing and you know same same goes for going backwards uh for instance so like if i'm going backwards and i get up to speed enough right so speed enough would be like 18 meters a second and then we slam on the brakes it kind of does that and then it just rolls. And because it has RCS on it, when we're on a low gravity area, such as the moon or Duna, stuff like that, we're able to rotate it back around. So that's how that all works. It's got plenty of science. Actually, this is a good spot to show you. So it's got lights, it's got good lights on it. It's got, you know, running lights on the bottom, track lights. It's got enough lights on the top to be able to see where it's going. I know it's, you know, over, but it's, it's making it easier to show you this. So it's got a running track on the bottom, which keeps it from uh, from, you know, hitting the ground and exploding because these, as you saw, these can hit the ground and just not blow up these beams. So I've got the, the front and the back bumpers. I know they're not even, but that's because it needs to fit inside of a fairing. So I had to set these up specifically to attach that way. As all of our science stuff it has a way to communicate, which is important because we've forgotten that in the past. It's got, uh, the chem cam, it's got RCS. It has uh, a lot of stuff and, the batteries are tucked inside of this science module here. It's hard to see, but they are there. Like you can kind of see like the end of a, a strut because it's all inside that. It's it's really clever. And uh, actually, let me see if I can show you in the vehicle bay. So you can also see from here, there's a lot of struts connecting everything, which is really important. It keeps it all together. The lights up on the top and the bottom. It's got parachutes up on the top and the bottom. Why does it have parachutes? Because it's going to be landing on Duna. And Duna has a mild atmosphere, so we want to be able to, you know, utilize that. I could technically put some RCS engines on this to try to slow it down. In fact, I may do that, um, but I think we should be fine. We have a lot of parachutes here, and this thing's pretty dang durable, so it shouldn't uh, explode when it hits the ground. But there's a few things here to note. It's got plenty of science gear. It's got two hard drives, right? The core, the probe core, is actually in the middle of that, so let me pull these off so you can see how I've done it. So you have that... Um, structural bit in the middle and then the probe core so if i remove these um just get 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 out of my way you'll see that's how i disguised so that's the power things and then the batteries so those are all disguised in there it's pretty clever i really like it a lot so let's see the uh lifter that i'm going to use to get it to duna so this is our rocket. Uh, it's got a few different stages. I mean, it's pretty complex going on in the staging, but you just basically have a booster stage. Then you have our main orbital stage. So it's going to get us into orbit and maybe a little bit more. Uh, you have the transfer stage. So this one's under a fairing, but it's going to get us to Duna. There's three nuclear engines in there. And then on the very top in that fairing, you have the rover. The rover's actually quite big. So... Here's a little trick. You see the compass, how it's all funky there? That's because the rover is sitting really weird, like up in the fairing. It has to sit at an angle. So you go to, uh, and if you have mech chip installed, or another drone core, stuff like that. So I have mech chips there, so I could just uh, control from here, and you see it fixes that. But we should be able to launch, no problem. Oh, it's so meaty. I love it. Let's... Uh, don't take that out of context. Ton context. Especially because, look at this thing. It's kind of phallic. But uh, it does require quite a bit of concentration to get into orbit, so I'm going to work on doing that. Hoping for a smooth separation of these boosters. And... Nice. Perfect. 
And now we can just uh, work on getting up into orbit. Apoapsis is looking good, or uh, pretty much, well, I wouldn't really call it a, <laughs> any type of maneuver here that we're doing, but it's working. I mean, we're just kind of going in the general direction that we need to go. We have so much power underneath us that it's not going to matter uh, too much. As long as we can get into an orbit, our nuclear engines will do the rest. It's got plenty of fuel on that next part of the staging. So we do want to be at a pretty high orbit. Uh, I'm just going to get our apoapsis up, and then I will get to, well, you know, I could probably just keep doing what I'm doing here and be completely fine, but I'm going to go on more of the safe side and do this. So we're going to speed it up, do, do, do. and now we'll get the rest of the orbit going. Really hard to turn with the bottom stage still attached because it's very, very heavy. So once we get rid of that, the thing should flip around quite a bit. Because I have multiple stabilization systems installed, if I'm sure of it. I'm pretty sure I, I put like three of them on just to make sure that when I get to the point where I'm making our orbit around Duna, that it will work really, really well. So this is just, we're going to make this go big and run out the rest of the fuel. Perfect. Now we're going to get rid of that stage. So first thing are these. Boom. Oh, it's so beautiful, isn't it? Next part is a bit tricky. So what do we got? We got that one. Then we have these. So that one, okay. So now those should disconnect. Okay, did it, did it work? Jettison, jettison. Okay, I'm just gonna <laughs> gently jettison everything. Jettison. I don't know why it didn't do it, but I'm not, I'm not upset. It's because we have to have it in a weird pattern in order for this to actually work, but boom. Okay, now we should be able to... Nice. Cool, it's actually functioning. So let's get this up to about a million. I'd be happy with that. And like I said, we have plenty of fuel. This, this one stage has so much fuel because it's got two of these tanks. And boom. 